guys, how was your weekend? So, what did you think about during this last weekend? I made this audio for you guys to really listen to it carefully. It is all about how you think and talk to yourself in your mind. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And please subscribe and share it with like-minded people. It's all up to you what you make of it. Let's help each other realize our potential and make our dreams come true. Wishing you an awesome week. Enjoy and chill. The swimming instructor tells you that you can float on the water, which will support you if you remain quiet, still, and at peace. But if you get nervous, tense, fearful, you will sink. When you are seeking wealth, prosperity, success, or spiritual healing, or anything, feel that you're immersed in the holy omnipresence, you know, like you'll feel you're in the ocean or in a swimming pool and realize the golden river of life, love, truth, and beauty are flowing through you now, transforming your whole being into the pattern of harmony, love, peace, and abundance. Feel yourself swimming in the great ocean of life. That sense of oneness will restore you, for he restored my soul. The following meditation will bring many wonderful things into your life. Listen to it. Say these truths are sinking into my subconscious mind. I picture them going from my conscious to my subconscious like seeds I'm depositing in the soil. I know that I'm old-fashioned and create my own destiny. My fate is in the infinite being which created all things. And my faith in God is my fortune. This means an abiding faith in all things good. I live in the joyous expectancy of the best, and only the best comes to me. I know the harvest I will reap in the future, because all my thoughts are God's thoughts, and the power of God is with my thoughts of good. My thoughts are the seeds of goodness, truth, beauty, and abundance. I now place my thoughts of love, peace, joy, success, abundance, security, and goodwill in the garden of my mind. This is God's garden. The glory and beauty of God will be expressed in my life and I will know if the, my garden will yield an abundant harvest. From this moment forward, I express life, love, and truth. I am radiantly happy and prosperous in all my ways. And God multiplies my good exceedingly. To prosper means to succeed, to thrive, to turn out well. In other words, when you are prospering, you're expanding, growing spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and intellectually. Never be envious or jealous of another person's wealth or promotion or their diamonds or jewels, for that would impoverish you. That would attract lack and limitation to you. Rejoice in their success and their prosperity and their wealth and wish for them greater riches. Because what you wish for the other, you're wishing for yourself, for you're the only thinker. What you think about the other, you're creating in your own mind and body and experience and also your pocketbook. This is why you rejoice in the success and the prosperity and the millions that others have. In order to truly prosper, it is necessary that you become a channel to which the life principle flows freely, harmoniously, joyously, and lovingly. Suggest that I suggest that you establish a definite method of working and thinking, that you practice it regularly and systematically every day. In visualization, you must immediately move in the room with the Lord. You immediately move into the paradise of being, doing, and having the good which you desire when? This day, now, in the present. So when you visualize, and you see and you feel yourself being, doing, and having the good which you desire, don't ever introduce the future as such. Never in your treatment, whether in visualization or affirmation, say, I will be, I'm going to be. It is always, I am. Together, I am. Again. The third time, 
I am for the function of visualization is to say through mental pictures and through feeling I am let the weak say I will be strong no let the weak say what I am strong the way to become that which you want to be is to say that you are that and visualization is probably the most effective way to say that I am. Let the poor say I will be rich. No, let the poor say what? I am rich. And if you want something in your heart of hearts, you must say I am the one who has this. Visualization, again, is probably the most effective way to say I am. I want to put it this way to make it even more clear. I am is said not only verbally. I am is said also visually. I am is also said with the feeling nature. It is not enough for me to stand here and simply say, I am rich. I must say it also visually. And how do I say I am rich visually? By seeing it, by visualization, by imagination. I must feel it. Now, I think this is important, and I want to be redundant about it right here, because we've always taught you to use the power of I am. And at this particular moment, I'm telling you three ways to say I am. You say I am verbally. You say I am visually by visualization you say i am emotionally by feeling who do you say i am it really means who do you say that you are who do you see that you are who do you feel that you are who do you affirm that you are so you see i'm pointing out to you now several other ways to say I am. You say that you are verbally. Let's, and let's give an example of this. Let's practice it now. I say that I am rich verbally. Let's do it. Do that together right now. I am rich. That's verbally. That's what? Affirmation. All right. Now, visually. Visualization. Now, how are we going to do that? Close your eyes. Whatever. That's visualization, also it's imagination. Close your eyes. See yourself rich. Whatever being rich means to you, see yourself as that. In visualizing it, you are saying visually, I am rich. Now, you also say, I am emotionally feeling. Let's practice saying I am by feeling it. I'm going to give you the affirmation that I use to help me feel rich, and I've shared it with you many times but you can never overdo it and it's this i feel rich and elegant think about what it means square your shoulders whatever you need to do you're looking in the mirror now let's say it together i feel rich and elegant i feel rich and elegant the third time I feel rich and elegant. What are three ways of saying I am? Verbally, visually, emotionally. This is inclusive, not exclusive. Some other ways may come. Every day of your life, you must consciously and subconsciously be saying, I am that which I want to be. Every day of your life, you must consciously and subconsciously affirm, visualize, and emotionalize yourself as being that which you want to be already in the nowness of consciousness. What would the feeling be like if it were true, but true, that I am the man that I would like to be? What would the feeling be like? 
for he, all things are made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Well now, if I dare to assume that I am now the man that I want to be, and I persist in that assumption, watching my mind morning, noon, and night, that anything that I find myself dwelling upon that is in conflict with that assumption, I ignore it, I put it aside. I will be faithful to this divine vision, the vision of myself. So any time I catch myself daring to feel less than the thing that I'm feeling or trying to externalize in my world, I simply stop it and go back to that assumption that I am the man that I want to be. If I persist in it and it becomes a fact, then I've found it. I don't observe imagining as I do objects in space. I am the reality that is called imagining. So you don't see God because God is spirit, but you see the results of his activity in you. He is active in you as you imagine. You're completely free to imagine good, bad, or indifferent. So you simply select what you want to imagine. Would you like to be, and you name it. Well, you say, but I don't have the background for it. I do not have any of the qualifications for it. It doesn't really matter. If imagining creates reality, you do not need the qualification that the world thinks you need. All you need to do is simply to boldly assume that you are the man, the woman that you would like to be. And if it proves itself in performance, then you found it. So Paul said to the Athenians, feel after him and you'll find him. Well, I have seen it numberless times in my 34 years of teaching. I started back in February of 1938. And here I am, it is February of 1972, and I'm yet to see it fail. If we, the offering power, apply it. It doesn't apply itself. We are the offering power. For in man is God, and God is man's own wonderful human imagination. So if I dare to assume that I am the one that I would like to be, well, that's God who's doing it. So how will I turn then to God tonight? Say, a half dozen people asked of me tonight. It takes no time. They voiced their request. It's a statement made in the book of John the epistle of John. If we know that he hears us in whatever we ask of him, we know that we have already obtained the request made of him. Well, when they're talking to me, they say, I would like so and so. Instantly it comes within the frame of my golden rule. It's something I would like myself. If I were in their present state of consciousness, I would like that. It doesn't violate my rule. It doesn't injure someone. It doesn't take from anyone. Well now, did I hear it? I heard it. Well, if I and my father are one, well then my father heard it. I do not know the means that will be employed to bring it to pass, but I can't deny that I heard it. If I heard it and I and my father are one, well, can I not now say to my inner being, Thank you, Father. You heard it, because I heard it. For if we know that he hears all that we ask of him, then we know we have already obtained the request made of him. So as they say to me, I would like so and so for that. I heard it. I do not know as a man called Neville how it's going to happen. I do not know. I'm not going to suggest what they do or what they should do. I only know that I heard it, and if I heard it, my father heard it, because he and I are one. He is my own wonderful human imagination. So I could actually say within myself as though we were two. Thank you. You heard it, but I heard it. And then allow the depth of my own being to devise the means necessary to bring it to pass. And that I am not responsible from that moment on. I do not call them up and say, did it happen? I do not get in touch with them and write them and say, tell me, what, how, how are things coming? Uh, it's not my concern. I did what was asked of me. 
And all that was asked of me was to hear, use my imagination lovingly on their behalf. Well, I did it. In the twinkle of an eye, you don't have to go into some sweat to do it. I don't have to go to some church and do it. Go to some synagogue and do it. Or some so-called holy place. Wherever I stand should be holy because the Father is within me. And where can you go to a more holy place than where God is? If I know God is my own wonderful human imagination, then where can I go that could be more holy than wherever I am, no matter where it is? So the request is made, I heard it. And then having heard it, I give thanks to the being within me who has the means, the wisdom and the power to externalize it. Knowing that the entire outside world that all objective reality is solely produced through imagining. What is now proven in the world was once only imagined. Try to deny that. Try to deny it. There isn't a thing in this world that you can say that's real, that was not first only imagined. So I say to everyone here, take statement, feel after him, and you'll find him. He didn't say you may find him. Feel after him and you'll find him.